thousands of watts just right over my head, hissing and popping, and it's eerie. I grew up not far away from this trail that leads out to a nice little pond that I still fish to this day. And uh, we're out looking for sound as we get into sunset. Right now that sun is just harsh. I'm wearing orange because, um, well, it's the start of hunting season. And though this land is not technically allowed to be hunted, uh, making myself visible, but I got the Fuji GSW and I got some uh, Fuji Velvia 100F in here that expired in 2005, so I'm shooting it at ISO uh, 25. Uh, I shot it at ISO 50 before, which follows the decade rule, but I just kind of felt like it, it really wasn't as strong. But I'm gonna cross process it anyways. Anyways, let's gather some sound, some field recordings, and see what we can find out here. There are these um, future power poles that are being set up here along this grid replacing some of the old wooden power poles. And it provides a really great opportunity to try to make some sounds. But because we have all of this electricity overhead and all of this metal, there is some sort of, um, there's some sort of synergy between the two because I'm picking up a tremendous amount of electrical waves. And if I'm quiet enough and the wind stops, you can hear them. Clicking and popping non-stop. There is so much to play with between the clicking, knocking, rubbing of my nail or my ring. Just my hand going across it's creating a lot of reverberation through this very very thick metal tube. So I'm gonna sit here for a little while and play with this. Got the contact mic set up. This sun is just absolutely harsh right now. And it's uh, killing my eyes to look at you. And it's probably killing your eyes to look at me. Just a fun little joke. questions that I get asked pretty often is 
how do you make the sounds for your videos. And I'm gonna show you real quick. Let's look at my bag. This right here is how I do it. Uh, this is my Zoom H5, which is just a audio field recorder. This thing I've had for like five years. It's beat to hell. Battery pack door thing is broken. The memory card slot door is broken, but it still works. And I got this dead cat on here, which helps me cut back on wind. And what you guys don't see in between all the talking and the photos and the B-roll and all that stuff is whenever I go to a location, I pop this thing out I set it down in a place that's fairly well hidden and I hit record and I walk away and I go shoot. And then by the time I come back, I've got you know, 20, 30, 45 minutes of just ambience, ambiance, however you want to pronounce it. Just usable nature sounds to overlay in the video to help it feel a little bit more real. I like to try to create a very honest and transparent uh, type of video. So getting authentic audio while I'm out shooting in locations is very, very crucial in helping convey that. This sun is so harsh. I do apologize, this is ridiculous. Oh, it's a lot longer than I thought of a walk. I remember it being shorter, but it was also thinner. And younger. You know, the, the crazy thing is, is like, we're fairly secluded. We got these power lines overhead, but you can't really hear them over here. There's a road about a mile and a half off in that direction. And just on the other side of these trees and brush is a pond. And that pond just reaches over on the other side of the land there and is a soccer field. And there's currently a game going on with a bunch of kids, as you can probably hear. And, uh, it's kind of quiet to the ear, but when you put this thing on and you start listening to the sounds, you knock that gain up a little bit and it's like, you can almost hear every word that they're saying. I'm hearing a lot of noise, stuff coming from behind me. I'm hearing knocking from a woodpecker, planes going overhead. I'm hearing just so many really incredible noises and you start to build like some sort of rhythm through it. And part of the project that I'm I'm working on and I've been developing in my head for like six months but now it's starting to kind of click is trying to intertwine natural sounds whether it's just ambience like this I don't know why I keep saying ambience it sounds very pretentious ambient sound that you're hearing right now just nature some kids planes going overhead uh, and mixing it with music, synths, uh, which is what I primarily work with. And the reason why I was thinking that that would be interesting was because I sit out here, oops, I sit out here and I'm surrounded by gear. I've got a camera here, I've got a camera over right here, just below the camera line. I've got my audio recorder, I've got tons of different microphones, I've got my headphones. <clears throat> I'm surrounded by all this technology, all this energy. And the energy around me, they're sort of coming together. But what you don't see is this stuff when you just hear the sounds. And I want to be able to introduce the human side of it, uh, the technology, the gear, the electricity uh, that humans generate and uh, intertwine that with 
the natural environment. And a lot of it has to do with sort of subsonic geophone um, recordings of trees and vegetation, soil, uh, rivers, so using a hydrophone. All of that stuff I, I want to, again, intertwine with music and see how they coalesce. And uh, I'm thinking maybe some sort of exhibition, which is never something that I've ever considered for any project, but because this will be most likely multimedia, that will most likely be the most logical uh, finish to the project. But we're in its early stages, well, in the development stages, really. And uh, this is the fun part, gathering sound, gathering images, and coming up with ideas. Uh, that's the fun side of photography. That's the fun side of art. When you actually sit down and have to come up with the reasons why you want to do this and how they come together to create an entire project, that's where it becomes difficult. Sequencing a book is difficult. Editing a book is, is difficult. Editing a zine and sequencing a zine is hard. Coming up with a story that you think is worth telling is difficult. And uh, it takes a lot to kind of put yourself out there to allow yourself to be criticized publicly, which is what happens here on YouTube, but to do it on a very sort of professional level. Um, so with all that being said, I'm trying to enjoy this part uh, because what comes after takes a little bit more critiquing and fine tuning to get where you want to be. just tried to do a uh, another contact recording of this uh, the boardwalk here because there's a lot of squeaky movable boards and uh, I'm just picking up too much interference from these power lines and that is really annoying but I think in the right scenario that might work in my favor so trying to take a negative and turn it into a positive here which is the opposite of what I'm going to do with this film when I get home. I'm going to take a positive and turn it into kind of a negative uh, when I cross-process this film. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how that turns out. Just an experiment. I haven't cross-processed in a while, so I just kind of wanted to mess around with it. But I'm going to head home now, develop this film, start to color grade some of this footage, and uh, eventually start to mess around with these sounds, see what we get. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video because uh, it really wasn't super entertaining. I, Not for you, I don't think. For me, I had a blast, but for you guys, I don't know if you cared for it. <laughs> Let me know in the comments. Anyways, I'll see you guys soon. Bye. See that? That's a super moon right there. Incredible.
right now there's a comet in orbit in our solar system and uh, I haven't yet to see it my buddy saw it a couple days ago or a couple nights ago but that is impressive as I was walking back just kind of turned around to take in the sights as I was leaving getting a little nostalgic for the times I've spent out here as a kid and that's what I see it's absolutely astonishingly beautiful moon too bad I wasted my last shot on a telephone pole <laughs> Ugh. regrets <laughs>